Hey, Shade Hunter here, and uh, I am joined by Phantom again. Hey, how's it going, Shade? It's going. So, we've done some changes around here. Uh, we lowered the floor of our service floor because we were getting kind of cramped, and putting, replacing all the power cables with the ender on energy conduits, you can't exactly walk through them, so we needed the room. But it's much cleaner now, um, much more streamlined, and power seems to be transferring better to everything. Um, and the reason we were able to do this is we pretty much not only drained our capacitor, but we also completely drained our backlog of, not the seeds, but all the potatoes. Yep. Yeah. Because we... Well, yesterday I had turned on the Ender Farm because I wanted some Ender Pearls, and, well, Didn't we now have enough. over 2,000 Ender Pearls. So that's probably not going to be turned on again for a while. Um, we moved the uh, thermoelectric generators over here. That's pumping out about 200 RF a tick, which... Pretty much runs the base, honestly. The, between these and the water wheel, it pretty much runs everything, unless we have the uh, void ore miner, ore miner on, or one of the um, spawner rooms turned on. Those significantly drain our power reserves, but right now we're sitting at 300-ish RF a tick, and the reason this is down is I charge my battery. So, everything's working great. Um, so, Phantom, what have you yes. been doing with bees? Well, bees. The thing about bees is, um, yeah, bees. So, bees are really awesome. They are a cool piece of this mod. They're part of the forestry mod, which includes... Bees, butterflies, and trees, tree breeding specifically. Uh, but who cares about bees? Why do we care about bees? Well, let's go take a look real quick at what's going on. Um, on the way there, though, I'll tell you a little bit about bees and why we care. Bees uh, do more than just produce honey. In the real world, they just produce honey, and honeycomb, I suppose, or wax, but... Here in the Minecraft world, bees produce all kinds of things. And uh, different varieties of bees produce different things. And so what I've done here is to try to start organizing things. So I have chests for each of the different varieties of bees as I uh, have encountered them. I try to get a chest for each different variety. Some of these varieties are the result of breeding for specific uh, characteristics. Some of them are the result of having collected them from wild hives. Over here in this chest, though, I have what I call my index stock. And I have, uh, ideally, I will have a, a pristine princess and then several drones for each variety that I encounter or that I uh, am able to breed to. A couple of them I don't have pristine. I have what's called ignoble stock. All that means is that at some point during the process, instead of the bee uh, producing some honeycomb and uh, a new princess and a new drone, it, it'll just die and the hive will just be uh, pristine stock. That never happens. So pristine is what you want. Ideally, you don't always get it. So sometimes you have to keep breeding and keep breeding until you do. Anyway, so bee breeding. All these various uh, types that I showed you here, some of these occur naturally in the world. They're what are called hive bees. And this first one is the meadows bee. That's a hive bee. Then we have the forest bee, which is another hive bee. Modest, which is another hive bee you find in desert type environments. There are some others, uh, the marshy, the rocky, the snowy. I have a few of those, but not very many. Sometimes you will find a common bee in hives when you collect. 
but the common bee results from breeding any two of these hive species together. Every time you breed, you have, uh, you have a couple of possibilities. One is you have what's called a hybrid, which will show up uh, when you analyze it as like a meadows forest bee. You have the possibility of producing a common bee when you breed those two. So you get a new, a new species uh, result. You actually have a uh, hybrid right here. The uh, dirty ones in your uh, stock chest um, is a dirty modest. Correct. Because some of these, that's the only examples I have. And that's the reason that they're still in there because I don't have any better example. Uh, when I get a better example, I'll replace it with a good one. So uh, what I'm trying to do on this side of the room is uh, keep uh, pure stock and, like I said, in this chest, the index bees. On the other side of the room over here, these chests contain uh, what are called uh, hybrid. And so if I click, you can see it says valiant, diligent hybrid, valiant, diligent hybrid. That's because these result from a cross between a valiant bee and a diligent bee, and they produced a hybrid. They did not produce a pure bee of either strain. Same here on the nobles, noble modest, noble modest, noble diligent. So uh, what we're aiming for and the reason to do this, like I said, different types of bees produce different products. Uh, what we're aiming for at the end of this process is what's called an imperial bee and an industrious bee, two different species we're aiming for. And the reason we're aiming for those two is the imperial bee produces what's something called royal jelly as a byproduct. The industrious bee produces pollen as a byproduct. And we need those two items in order to build the upgraded bee habitat, which is called aviary. And an aviary allows you to control a whole bunch of elements all at once control a bunch of environmental variables and that sort of thing. And you can use the aviary to then uh, change the characteristics of the bees that you are raising there. So you can, you can uh, force them into uh, say wanting uh, cold weather or force them into wanting uh, hot weather or a moist environment or a dry environment or uh, use cactus instead of flowers. So you can change a bunch of the environmental variables. The other thing it lets you do is it lets you actually um, increase the probability of certain mutation. And mutations are how you get new species. So some of these that I showed you, um, anything above common is uh, it's basically a mutation that results from certain crosses. Mutations typically have a fairly low probability. So we want to raise that probability when we're trying to get specific mutations. And the reason we want those is because certain bees produce really, really cool stuff. Certain bees will produce diamond as a byproduct in their honeycomb. Certain oh. bees will produce icy shards. So some of these things are going to be really important for us as we move forward. In fact, a couple of things are going to be uh, not just important, they're going to be critical. We won't be able to advance ages until we, until we get some of these items. So bee breeding actually isn't just a neat thing to do. It, it's actually a requirement. In this pack, at least. And, and then speaking about the byproducts, um, we have spent hours upon hours upon hours trying to get gas tears in the nether because... When we go to the actually addition stuff in this mod pack, the empowered where is it? Empowered Inori crystal, which is basically just empowered. It, we you take the um, Inori crystals and you empower them. Well, in order to empower the the Inori crystals, we need a gas tier. So in order to automate this, we need a influx of gas tiers. Well, the only way to get gas tiers is either killing gas or from bees. The apocalyptic um, princess gives a 5% chance. And with what he's talking about with all of the 
increasing production and everything, we can actually increase that 5%. I think the total we can actually get out of that is about 50%, which is actually really good. So that's one of the things that's going to help us continue. Um, one thing that he was mentioning was the uh, frost, frozen shard or something like that. Uh, icy shard. Or icy shard. I, th I think it's the icy shard. Uh, I'm not sure. Anyway, it's it's a uh, some kind of an ice byproduct thing that we uh, that we ice need. shard. And, yeah, <clears throat> ice shard. Okay, I am almost had it right. Yeah, and we haven't produced any of them, so it's easy to forget it. Right, because <laughs> we need we need to either get the icy, the glacial, the merry, or the tipsy um, bees. I would actually rather have the glacial because they have a forty percent chance of producing an ice shard. And the reason we need that is to actually have a vacuum freezer. The reason we need a vacuum freezer is to be able to have tungsten steel ingot. And the tungsten steel ingots are required for the further, uh, ex, uh, further progression into the ages. So that's why I've just kind of let Phantom do his thing. And, um, do his bee breeding. Yeah. Um, one thing that we've actually noticed that we're um, going to be doing in between episodes is building him an entire bee location in the mining dimension. Because when these bees are going full force, it creates way too many entities and lags the server. So we have to move bees. Yep. So at the moment, I'm not doing anything with bees. Uh, the hives are all empty at the moment because I was trying to wind it down in preparation for that move. So nothing's really going on right now, but I've got a lot of stuff uh, stocked up, built up, and as soon as we're ready to make that move, we'll we'll kick it back into full gear. So but that's kind of got what's a... going on with bees, and yeah. this is the bee room. And you've got a lot of chests, so it looks like we're going to need uh, a lot of storage. So, I, yeah, which brings me to storage. Huh. One huge, of the uh, things that I want to work on today, um, which is in this chest. We made a vat. We actually made an entire system going on to try it out, um, and then I tore it down because we didn't want it right here in the middle of our entryway. Um, it the was vat, kind of clogging the living room. Yeah, and then some. Uh, we had to make the vat, which is four electrical steel, two tanks, a machine chassis, which you all have seen. The tanks are made pretty easy for iron. Um, and then we had the inventory panel, which was uh, kind of a pain. So we just kind of made it. Two pulsating crystals, which is um, pulsating iron around diamonds. Um, sentient ender. That's the hardest part, honestly, because we have to catch a witch in a soul vial. It was actually funny. Yeah, it was actually funny because when you <laughs> when you catch them, they disappear, and and they're stuck inside the jar that you're carrying. Yeah, you make a soul vial. You have to then go to the entity, right click it with the soul vial, and drags them in. <clears throat> it's quite uh, useful. But I I uh, spotted a witch uh, across the way there in the desert, where they tend to spawn a lot, and. She was looking the other direction, so I hurried out there, and she was just standing there looking the other direction. I walked right up behind her, you know, like maybe five feet away, and just nabbed. She never even turned around. So I was like, she's going to turn around and hit me with like 27 potions. I'll, this will never work. No, nah, she just kept, I don't know what she was fascinated by, something over there. Anyway, I just walked up and nabbed her, and it's like, Poof, that was that was easy. I was expecting it to be a lot harder, but it turned out to be super easy. Yeah. And Luckily, it's actually night, because we're going to need three more witches in soul vials. But this right here is a tiny uh, inventory three, system. What? Yeah, we need three more. For, for, oh, uh, <sighs> kill me. This uh, tiny inventory system here, it actually only holds about a little over 5,000 items. Um, so it's not big enough. We want it better. Oh, 5,000. We've almost got 5,000 different kinds of items. Yeah. 
So what we do is we have um, dark iron bars and chassis plates, which the chassis plates are just uh, iron surrounding a machine chassis, and you get 16 of them. So yeah, this is the easy part. Um, some chests, the bars are um, dark iron bars, and dark iron is iron, coal, and obsidian. And then we just drop this guy in here, and we get the next one. Um, what? Why is it saying tiny? Tiny to tiny? That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense at all. This part we haven't tried on camera. It's supposed to be small. It's supposed to go from tiny to small. And... Right. Well, it has... It looks different. I'll pull it out of there and see what happens. Yep, it's different, all right. And it says small, so we're good. So it worked. It just was displaying wrong. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's... And, and what I'm going to do is, since every single one of these things requires the previous tier and the same materials, I'm going to go all the way up to the extended warehouse, honestly. The, uh, as far as I can actually get it. So now it's it says small, so I'm going to place it again, and now it's medium. And then, oops, I didn't want to place it again. Go in here, and this should be large. Yep, that's large, all right. Or big, I should say. And then... Now it should change from large, or big to large to huge. So now, now it's large. So I'm just kind of curious as to, <clears throat> I did not want to do, I did it again. I'm just kind of curious as to how big this big one's going to be. And now I'm just going to keep switching it so that we just kind of, now we're at the <clears throat> Inventory System Storage Extended Warehouse. I think that's the biggest one, isn't it? I believe so. Yep, Extended yeah, Warehouse. Extended, extended Warehouse is the end. Wow, that's got a lot of stuff on the front of it now. <laughs> All right, so we're going to set this guy up, and where we're wanting to set it up is down here. And I'm going to set it up right there. Now we just need power to come across here, and while we run all the cables and get the other inventory panels set up, because what we're going to do is have a the conduit for the inventory panel up right here, so that we can have a panel on all four sides, and we don't have to have these crafting tables in the way. And we have, we'll have access to all of our stuff. So while we get all this stuff crafted up, I've got a few things in here. Um, we're going to get it crafted. We're going to get it set up. And we'll come back and show you how it works. So we'll be right back. And we're back. Uh, just got this set up. Um, what I did down here is I set the uh, inventory system storage right there. I stuck the vat next to it with nether wart and rotten flesh. Yeah, I know the rotten flesh is getting low, but we'll hook that up in a little bit. Um, I've got my fluid conduits coming out of the vat with nutrient distillation going to our inventory panel because it actually says right here, um, inventory panel allows remote access to inventories via remote awareness upgrade in item conduits. Use nutrient distillation for power. So that's why that's there. And it's connected to the storage with item conduit. Um, I have power running all the way along this wall and across from there just to make sure that everything is covered. I have water coming in from this reservoir um, right here that goes across. And luckily, uh, Ender IO stuff smart enough that it doesn't mix these two pipes. And then it goes in the side. I have a garden cloche here that, luckily enough, grows nether wart quite rapidly. And it's going to fill up this chest. But I didn't want it to fill up our our uh, inventory storage, so I just have it pumping straight into the side of the vat. Later, when we have the, all of our boxes connected to the inventory storage, the vat will have an unlimited amount of rotten flesh that it needs. 
because we, all we have to do is just turn on the mob farm. And it's, it's pretty nice. So what we're going to do is come up here and show the process of making another, uh, another panel real quick. The solarium, the enderhead, the two silicon, and there it goes. And because of these nifty little ancient capacitors that I found, it's pretty quick. Now we have to go into this guy, throw the ender and the witch that Phantom found, and four levels uh, that I don't have. I gotta go down and get some. I hang on here. Uh... Oh, wow, that works. Um, Use those and that'll give you some level. That's seven, that'll work. And use levels. And I just put a double layer capacitor in here just to make it a little faster because the other ones aren't so great. And there's our sentient ender. Then we come over here, throw our sentient ender into here with the dark steel, the pulsating crystals, the fluid tank, and the remote awareness upgrades. And there's our another panel. And what we can do is come over here and stick it on there. And it's online. So now we can exit from two different directions. Between this episode and next, we'll add two more. Um, uh, two more panels. Um, and let's just see how this works. I'm just going to kind of throw all mm -hmm. these things in here. And here in a second, you'll actually see everything populating into that storage thing. Now what we can do... To show this, throw that in there too. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things in there. Well, under Ender, but if we actually get rid of that, because there's actually a uh, uh, JEI sync. So whatever JEI has here, it will show up in here as well and sort it accordingly. Um, this one actually, I have. Um, on the extract side, I have it always active in two speed upgrades, but I'm actually going to snag one of these speed upgrades and put this guy to in, out, and extract always active with speed upgrade. And the reason I do that is because if you actually take something out of here and use it for a crafting, you can't just... You can't just drop it back in there. You have to put it in the return area, and it will slowly fill it back into its spot in the system. And <clears throat> if we actually come down here and look at this, it says 244 items in there. But that's total items, not separate stacks of items. So we're going to see how many things that this thing can hold, and uh, in between episodes, I'm hoping a lot. Um, because that way it's going to help get rid of a lot of our stuff. Our stuff hanging out everywhere. So what I'm going to do real quick before we end this is sh uh, show you one thing that I'm going to also be working uh, towards in between episodes because I've got some things planned. But I want a drawer controller. And... It would take way too many resources to add the awareness upgrade to every single conduit on every single drawer that we have. Because this awareness upgrade is three silicon, an ender eye, four conduit binders, and electrical steel. And electrical steel is basically a silic... Uh, what is it? It's coal dust, iron, and silicon. So... That would be a lot of separate crafting. If we just got a drawer controller from the the drawer mods, uh, then it wouldn't be so bad. But it requires the basic circuit board from Forestry. Now, only the recipe using calculator circuits is correct. That's in here, and it has to be made in a carpenter. So we need three blue of these different types of circuits, and they have to match these, plus the redstone ingot, plus diamonds, in order to make this. And they have to be analyzed. So we have to, to get the damaged circuit, we need an extraction chamber, and just 
keep dumping cobblestone into it, which isn't going to be hard because of our, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, our cobblestone generator. We could just hook it up to the side of it and have it just keep pumping cobblestone into it. Um, and the extraction chamber is this. Well, that's actually really easy because if I do, let's see here. If I do extraction, there's the extraction chamber right there. This is what it requires. And I'm missing a power cube. Why am I missing a power cube? I thought I put it in there. Did I put it somewhere else? And why am I not seeing the system? It's possible. Uh, no, there's a power cube in there. That's odd. It's not seeing that I actually have the power cube. It sees the other stuff, but... Alright, so I'll grab the power cube and put it in my inventory right there. Ah, Phantom's already filling it up. Yep. Working on getting it populated. Alright, are you going to see everything now? Yeah, it just didn't want to see the power cube in the system for some reason. And it's not pulling all the other stuff. That's kind of annoying. So, we'll have to figure out what the what the deal is on that. There's my four reinforced stone that I need for the corners. There's my four weakened diamonds. And there's my power cube. And there's my extraction chamber. Uh, let's see here. Hey, I have power conduits. Awesome. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm going to do is... Throw down a power conduit right there. Throw down in my extraction chamber, and and here's here's the thing on, on why I'm I'm kind of why I don't like this. I'm gonna throw a stack of this in there, and you're gonna see just how obnoxious this is. Oh, it's working. It's just that slow. Hey, Phantom, come check this out. What do you got? Just look in there. Look at the progress bar in the middle. For one piece of stone. One piece. And those circuits have a 12.5% chance of dropping. They won't drop all the time. Yeah, that's why you set this thing up. You keep it loaded and you let it run all the time. Yeah, so I'm probably going to move, end up moving this algorithm separator over one and um, setting up our... I'll probably have a crate to have this thing export into the crate um, and then also put the stone in that thing. Yeah, the small stones in that because it will produce small stones from a calculator. Will it go in there? Yes, it will. Um, and then also have our... I'll probably have our cobble gen over here pumping cobble into the side of it, so we can pretty much just set it and let it run, and run, and run, and run, and run. Yep. And eventually we'll get what we need. But, yeah, until we can speed this up, that's going to be a pain. Anyhow, that's all we have time for this time, this episode. And, let's see here, anything you want to add? Uh, stay frosty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I got none. Nope, I'm good. See you guys next time. I'll see you on the flip side. See ya.